Have you ever experienced your dog coming to a complete stop on your walk? So what is your dog doing when they do that? Are they stopped for smell or are they focusing on something? So what do you do next when that happens? My name is Linda Kwan and I am the owner and trainer of Wow Bow Wow. We specialize in working with pet parents with puppies and adolescent dogs. We help the pet parents understand their dog so they can train them easy. So let me see, let me make sure it's popping up this um, live on my feed so I can answer questions. I can't see the any comments or questions when I'm on my computer itself. So I'm checking on my phone. So when you're walking along, you know, sometimes, you know, my dogs have stopped for a sniff, right? But sometimes they stopped because they see something new or they see something that they've seen before, but they has worried them in the past. So how about your dogs? What are they stopping suddenly for? Okay. Now, if it's something that's new or something that's been worrisome for them, what do you do next? What I'm here to ask you to do is to actually stop and let them observe that new thing or that worrisome thing. Let them observe it, let them assess it, examine it, evaluate it. And then you'll see their body kind of relax. Have you seen this before? Do you understand what I'm talking about? If not, then try it out and see if you see these steps and how they look at something new or worrisome to them. See if they go through these steps. Now, I'm gonna put an asterisk here because when I work with uh, pet parents with reactive dogs, what I tell them to do is to make sure to get their dog at a safer distance where they know their dog is not going to start lunging and barking at that worrisome thing, okay? So if you know your dog is will react that way, and maybe that's why you just may be pulling them away when they stop, stare at something, because you're worried they may start barking, which I totally understand. But once you get to a good distance, and you have to, you have to practice with them to see what is the right distance for them, be able to turn back around and let them observe, assess, and then deem safe that whatever that thing is. So who has puppies here? Who has adolescent dogs here? Or maybe you got a rescue dog. Well, for puppies, people throw around this word socialization. Um, it's actually referring to a developmental period for puppy just from like three weeks to about 12 to 16 weeks. So I know they're not fully vaccinated. So you're not supposed to take them out where it's unsafe. But, but the socialization period is a prime time to expose your puppy to the things, events, um, sounds, smells of your world that they are gonna be exposed to. So I recommend people carrying their dog, or if your dog's you know, on the little bit bigger or heavier side, or you're not capable of carrying your dog, put them in a, a little wagon or those, you know, those, those dog little buggies that they have now. <laughs> strollers, okay, strollers, the right word. Um, so taking them out to observe, even in a car ride, getting used to a car ride is a new thing for some dogs too but getting them um, out and about to see things, to hear new things, to smell new things, to, um, if it's safe, to touch new things, you know, walk on new things, or um, experiencing new kinds of like, um, like even a, a jacket on them. That's all kind of new novel things for them to experience. So, Socializing your dog is not just exposing them to other dogs and people, it's about exposing them to 
the potential things that they may encounter in your world as their dog in your world. Now, um, adolescent dogs, you know, uh, after that first initial socialization period, you should definitely continue. You should definitely continue exposing them, giving them positive exposure to sounds, visuals, textures, uh, smells of new environments and things for sure. Now, when you do this for them, this helps them become a more confident dog later in life. You'll have most likely less issues with them becoming reactive, overreactive, out of fear. Now for adolescent dogs, okay, because they get so excited, because you know they, their hormones are raging, sometimes you know they're excited at barking at other things not because of fear necessarily, sometimes it is fear, but sometimes it's basically excitement and frustration. Back to our topic here, exposing puppies, whether you have a puppy or adolescent dogs or a new dog. When you see new things, or actually when they see new things and when they stop, I want you to give them the opportunity to actually check it out, all right? Now you say, how long? Well, I mean, you know, we're not talking about 20 minutes or anything like that, but I see a lot of pet parents, um, actually uh, they push them along they, or they pull them along much sooner than that, within a couple of seconds. I say, give them at least 10 to, I don't know, 20 seconds, but you'll see the body language. Do you recognize your dog's body language? When they're staring, when they're staring at something, you see their body all of a sudden relax because they deemed it safe. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If not, you know, let me know and I'll show you pictures. I'll, I'll share some videos and pictures of dogs and how they will like, all of a sudden you'll see them relax. And then what's best is that one, to see them disengaging from that thing. Because that's what you'll see also, the body relaxing and then they'll kind of look away and they won't be like so intently staring at it. Now on your walks, if you could do this for me, you know, can you take them out on your walks and do this for me maybe at least one time each walk? Three times each walk, I would love to see that. But if you can do it at least one time in each walk this week. I would love to hear about it. So I hope this tip was helpful. I hope this helps you understand your dog and what they need in order to become more confident. So confident dogs. If you have a confident dog, most likely you'll have a less overreactive. Now, and a competent dog, when you, when you work with them like this and help them learn to cope with new kinds of things and give them the time to assess and come to terms with it on their own, then you know what? You're building a great relationship with them too. This trusting relationship. One thing I don't want you to do if they see something new is to drag in towards that thing they're worried about, okay? Um, now, if you know you have an overreactive dog with other dogs, yeah, you definitely want to don't do that. But um, when there's like a, like for example, early, was it today? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. So earlier this week, um, I'm trying to remember when, maybe it was last week, but uh, the, um, the water company, they had to do some work on the, the pipes in the street and they were digging up things in, the, in our street, in our neighborhood. And so they have these um, orange, um, it's not cones per se, but these orange uh, standing pipe light. Um, I guess they are to keep people away from that area where they dug. And so, um, when my dog first saw that, one of them, Jill, she was kind of worried about it. 
didn't know what it was. So she came to a complete, complete stop and was staring at it. And then she started walking a little bit slower and I just matched her pace, letting her go smell it, go check it out. And then when she looked a little bit more comfortable, I said, okay, good girl. And then we walked on, all right? So um, with another dog, I wouldn't necessarily do that if that's what, what is worrying your dog. But with regards to like inanimate objects, they want to go check it out. Let them go check it out. Don't pull them to it. Sometimes they'll go towards it and then they'll move away from it because they became a little bit overwhelmed or they may go back to it or they stretch out with their nose like this, with their hind legs really far back. And so let them do that. That's part of the observation. Let them assess that that thing that they're kind of worried about or scared of or knew is safe. So when you let them do that, and then you see them all of a sudden relax and then disengage, you reward that, you praise that, and then you move along. It gives them, you know, it gives them confidence, but confidence because they had the opportunity to assess. They had the opportunity and control over their environment. So obviously you have the ultimate control, right? You have the ultimate control. You don't have to be the alpha, but giving them choices, giving them opportunities to come to their own conclusions that things are safe is a wonderful way to build your relationship with them and to build their confidence. So if you need any more help from us, from us, let me know. We'll have our contact information and text that this live is done. And lastly, you know, yesterday was the 4th of July and my dogs and I survived. Let me know how your dogs did. Again, you know, novel things in excess. That was lots of noises, lots of lights, uh, over overwhelming for a lot of dogs. I know um, for over a month, I've been posting um, suggestions and tips on how to help your dog. So let me know. I just wanna know if everyone's dog is safe. Put it in the comments. Let me know if you and your dogs survived. All right, have a great Tuesday and see you next Tuesday. Thank you for joining us for our Training Tip Tuesday.